Ruth, I wanted to ask a little bit about your writing group, but I want to make sure that I uh, ask you guys uh, a couple of questions from the blog that uh, that I've been trying to work more into the show. So get ready to be asking about your favorite books. That's going to be fun. Um, but I did want to ask about the, is it the Barrington Writers Workshop? Because you've got a lovely blog post at the top of your blog, or was as of the recording. Hopefully it still will be close uh, as, of, as, as of the day. Um, about working with your critique group and, and getting the most out of that. And how does that differ from Sarah, who I notice uh, is thanked specifically for helping you to change the ending uh, of, <laughs> of the trip? <trickster. laughs> um, Sarah asked me to do a post for Inspired Quill's blog about getting the most from your writing workshop. And after I sent her that one and it was it was ready to go, I thought, you know, here's I also learned a lot by just critiquing other people's work during the workshop. And so I said, I wrote, you know, getting the most part two, and I linked to the Inspired Quill blog and, and then mine. The Barrington Writers Workshop has been around for quite a while, and it, uh, at least 10 years, and it's, um, it, it used to meet in the library, which happens to be right next door to my building, all right, which is how I found it, because we moved here maybe two and a half years ago. And, uh, and I've always belonged to a writing workshop. I really value the support. And um, this is a really this is a really good group. <clears throat> um, there are um, people who are good writers and good critiquers and who are very conscientious. And we are meeting by we meet we met all we've always met once a week Wednesday night from six thirty to nine, which is quite a commitment really. And uh, now we've been meeting by Zoom, so um, it uh, it's. Um, I don't know how people, how writers survive without a writer's group. Um, well, I, this particular group, as I say, we're mostly critiquing one another's work. Um, I belong to an online group that doesn't do critiques at all, that is, and it is closed, it is locked. You have to be invited, <clears throat> so it's private. I assume my invitation got lost in the mail. Sure. Yeah, probably. <laughs> that means people can complain about their publisher or their agent or their editor without committing suicide, without committing <laughs> suicide, you know? So that group is like a support group where someone will, someone recently, their age, their royalty check bounced, which I thought, oh my God, oh my God. So, you know. So, I mean, that's the kind of thing you can share on that that you would not share publicly, probably, unless you were really mad. So, um, I don't know. I've always belonged to a, a group. Um, uh, we're, I don't know. It's, it just, it keeps me, for one thing, it keeps me motivated. It, uh, um, it, it keeps me on track to know that these people all know I'm writing, and so I'm not going to take two months off in the middle of a book, probably, you know. Um, so it's very, it's good. And um, curious, because I've, I've, I've seen a, a number of people <laughs> melting down on social media over the uh, past years, but one of, one of the added bonuses, I guess, of uh, the, the pandemic is that we've gotten to see when people are really at their, at their stressed out, where that character is and, and yeah. sometimes that's a it's incredible like oh my gosh you have all that to deal with and look what you're also doing and, yeah. and other times not not so much so uh thinking about especially over the last uh year i know of a, a number of editors or agents who I've, I've seen saying things publicly or i would have never thought but here here we are uh, that interesting um, why is it a good idea if you're walking away from a publisher, you're never going to see them again? Obviously, that's not a problem for you because you're going to write 23 more books uh, with Sara. But in, and before you found Inspired Quill, um, why is it important to keep those interactions that don't go so pleasant out of your social media feed and, and putting them where just anyone can read them? Are you asking me? Uh, yeah, but ask you and then I'll, I'll ask Sara also. Okay. Uh, you never want to burn a bridge, right? You need them much more than they need you, probably. Um, the only reason you would complain publicly would be to warn another other writers away from, say, an agent who is dishonest or something like that. But and even then, you'd be careful because it 
too easy to get a reputation for being difficult to work with. And you never know who's going to be friends in the industry. Um, you know, some agent that you dump on may be friends with an editor who now looks at your not submission, you know. So um, it's just not a good idea to. And usually when people do say things in public, it's because they're so angry or worked up that they have not stepped back and thought about it first, right? So you need to do that. Sarah, uh, thoughts? And also, what do you think when you see authors uh, publicly uh, saying things that maybe they shouldn't? I I think, yeah, th there's definitely two sides to every story, right? So I'm, um, I'm a massive advocate for if anyone in the industry has been dishonest, if royalty checks are late with no reason, there's always mitigating, potentially mitigating circumstances, but you need to be honest and transparent and, you know, you've got to know what you're getting yourself in for. Um, there's also a, a big problem within the industry still of, um, you know, things like transphobia and racism and, and stuff like that. And to be honest, I'm happy to see people called out regardless of, of who they are, because, you know, I, I'm in a very privileged position in that I'm a publisher. Right. So I don't have that same level of, um, you know, oh, I don't want people to think that we're bad to work that I'm bad to work with as an author might have um, however I will always say to authors who want to work with us you know if you have a problem with your publisher saying things like black lives matter or trans rights are human rights or you know stuff like that then we're not the publisher for you obviously from our perspective there are plenty of other people who are a good fit and who we can work with um, and it's important because the industry has always had a transparency problem and still has a transparency problem. You know, we saw that last year with the publishing paid me hashtag, which was terrifying and a real eye opener. Um, the, the challenge that I have sometimes is when people who are slightly outside of the industry make comments, sweeping comments about the industry and say how bad different things are. Um, and, and part of that is, you know, trying to leave your ego at, at the door and, well, Inspired Quill doesn't do things like that and we'd never consider saying this or doing that or we've been working towards better accessibility and how dare they say that publishing is, is like this. But at the same time, I get it. I understand because, you know, who's going to know about this little tiny independent press in the UK who's doing this one thing that they're ranting about that day you know it's one of the big things I've seen at the moment for example is um, book reviewers wanting to be paid to to review books um, and I think that's you know it's definitely a, a two-sided coin right because you see everyone else in every other industry getting paid to do product placements well, why can't, you know, we spend hours writing blog posts and doing booktube videos and all of that, and we don't get paid for it. It's, well, they're not paying you to promote their book in the way that you necessarily think they are, but that's a wider industry challenge, I think. So even if I saw a book blogger, you know, complaining about, oh, you know, put so much effort in and publishers suck because of X, Y, Z, I wouldn't necessarily not work with them. I'd just make sure that expectations are set very early on. Um, but I might not be completely representative of the industry because I'm quite gung-ho in, in, in a lot of places. And I, I recognise that the publishing industry has a long, long way to go. So, Sarah, do you check uh, authors' social media before you sign them? Or ever, for that matter. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do, yeah. Some some of our authors are, are louder on social media about certain things than than others. But from as far as I'm concerned, as long as that ethos fits with Inspired Quill, which all of the authors do, then you know I'm I'm more than happy to 
You know, I, I'm not going to turn around and say, Dorothy, stop tweeting about the presidency. <laughs> you know, um, I, that that's not something that I'm I'm going to turn around and say. Now, if if we had an author that that turned around and you know um, said something transphobic, then we'd have to have a discussion, and and we would absolutely because that's not you know, that's not the kind of space that I want to cultivate as, as a publisher. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of when authors submit work to us, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll check just to make sure that the ethos is aligned. But whether you've got 20,000 followers or 200 followers, that's not a, a big deal for me because that's something that, that we can work on. So, you know, the, the sort of size and shape of of an author's online presence as long as the author's willing to work at it, it it's not something that that we really take on board i do wonder something that's uh, I, I i've been wondering for a while um partly because the one, one, one effect of the last four years of uh, a president i refuse to make this show about uh is not his behavior but behavior of so many people that have followed like mm -hmm. oh if this terrible person hadn't come along and said these bad things i wouldn't have known 73 million of my fellow uh, americans apparently are on board and that's just fine with them mm -hmm. how often does it happen and i know the orson scott card exists so i know that this can happen that an author sends you a manuscript that you fall in love with. My God, this is this is incredible. Uh, and then you go to their social media and it's all, all lives matter. And uh, mm. here's my link to Tucker Carlson that I watch faithfully every night. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever else. Do you, do you know what, Rob? We've never had that. And I think that's because certainly over the last few years, we've, as inspired Quill, we have been more open with, the sort of ethos that, that we want to cultivate. So, you know, one of our pinned tweets for, for a long time was, you know, um, consuming media is a political act, black lives matter, trans lives are, are human rights, um, you know, um, and and three or four more, more things like that. So I think if people have done their homework, and we only want people who do their homework, right, um, the kind of people who we would not feel comfortable working with just don't bother with us and that's that's fine <laughs> if it ever did happen then you know i've always said that that for me i i have to want to work with the author because if i don't then it's just going to be hell on earth for me because i i don't get paid for <laughs> running inspired quill so if it's if it's something that i i hate doing then what's the point sort of thing so um it would be a shame of course it would but i think my response would be sorry but we're not the place for you because i i also have to think about the authors that who we currently work with and making sure that it's a a safe environment for for those authors as well and the last thing that that i want to do is is bring someone on board who's who's going to jeopardize that my duty of care is is to to the authors that that we have dorothy i want to bring you in on this as well because this is something that i've i've been struggling with and every esteemed audience knows that half the show is me just finding out the stuff that i want to know and i hope some of it's interesting to them as well <laughs> um but with social media one of my new year's resolutions this year was to just drop politics out completely because when i when i saw the election result I, I live in uh, indiana which went bright red on the first hour of vote counting on election day and i saw that and i thought well i guess they didn't read my angry tweets i, <laughs> I wrote a very thoughtful facebook post on on, on better ways to think and apparently it missed them uh, and so I pulled way back, uh, not because uh, I don't believe in speaking out politically. If there's, if you're having a protest, something effective, let me get in on that. Let me let me come with you and, and be a part of that. But as far as social media goes, I've kind of think that well, you know what? If I could just get more people reading and practicing empathy, hopefully some of this other trouble will will sort itself out once once you know maybe you're going to continue to be a bad person for the next five years but you started reading you're thinking you're thinking about how other people feel 10 years from now let's see who you are yeah. um, so i pulled way back i don't 
but at the same time, I know that um, Inspired Quill has their diversity pledge. This is important to you. You are outspoken on these issues. And Dorothy, I've seen you be relatively outspoken on, on uh, social media as well, usually because I liked and retweeted it. Um, <laughs> how political are you being and how political should authors be? Is there anything to, regardless of, of which side of the, uh, of the, you know, I, which side of the aisle? What side is barely competent and one side is terrible? I hate the way this thing is framed. Um, but how how useful is it to be outspoken politically and, and how do you try to manage that with your social media? Dorothy, you first and then Sarah, back to you. I don't know how useful it is to other people. It's useful to me. <laughs> it makes me feel better to rant a little. Um, I used to, when I first started using social media, I kept my politics completely out of it because I was afraid I would offend re potential readers. And finally, I decided to own my politics. That that was, um, and that, that felt important to me, given the times we live in. Um, I, I, as I say, I don't know how useful it is. And I try not to um, film. I, I want there to be other things too. You know, I want to sound like a person with a wider life than I probably have at the moment. But, um, you know, and I try not to be mean usually about what I say because people do have legitimate differences and, um, and some illegitimate ones, you know. And I sometimes wonder how my politics, whether or not it comes through in what I write. You know, it seems to me I'm consistent there. What I write is consistent. I don't talk about real life politics, but I talk. I, I frequently write about who should rule the kingdom, right? Who is a just ruler? Who is uh, cruel? Who is uh, selfish? I frequently write about those things. So I wonder how, how people read that. From coming from different perspectives, you know. So um, I like what you're saying about empathy. There is actually, I think I've seen uh, empirical evidence that children who read fiction uh, um, show more empathy in the tests that those particular studies were doing. So I think you're right about that. I don't see how you could not be right. But uh, so I like that. And you know, maybe I'll think about that <laughs> in the next. I think I'm going to write, I'm posting less about politics now, just because things are calmer. So. That is a nice thing. Politics are calmer. The super friends are good again. My God, 2021 <laughs> so far, pretty good year. Right. <laughs> Uh, Sara, what uh, what advice do you have in the same vein of, of authors managing their social media and how what responsibility do you feel to your social media? Mm. I think Dorothy hit the nail on the head slightly when when she was saying don't be mean. So for me, the you know, everything is political, right? You know, people say, oh, you know, don't make this political. It's kind of all well, it is because that's just the world we live in. You know, everything is is polit consuming media is a political act. Publishing is uh, a political act. If you think about, you know, even if you don't think it is, I think the thing for me for Inspired Quill is be constructive. So don't just post, you know, mean things about politicians that you don't like and don't post gushing, you know, fan fiction about politics, uh, politicians that you do like. Right. Um, for me, it really comes down to does, you know, <sighs> there are human rights issues that not everyone will agree on. And for me, they seem to be so obvious, like, you know, Black Lives Matter, for example. Oh, don't politicize this. Well, first of all, it is incredibly political and, you know, people who think that that's not a thing, it for me quite short-sighted but um you know it, it's to do with um yeah sort of the, the human rights side of things whether you know you're you're left wing or right wing or centrist or or whatever um you know that's something outside of what i would publish with 
inspired quill. So, you know, we, we kind of keep political parties out of it when, when we're posting things, um, you know, and, and it's more to do with the outcome of, of policies, um, you know, protests, that, that sort of thing. And, and as I say, it's usually to do with human rights and everyone should, should have the right to, to live in, in a dignified way, effectively. Um, so there are there are lines in the sand that that I would sort of not go past when posting with inspired quill, even though I'm I think that personally I'm slightly more radical than um, than inspired quill would be posting. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that's an important distinction to make. And I would say for for authors, you know, regardless of, of what side of, of the line you are, um, make sure that what you're posting is more constructive than just sort of name calling. Fair enough. Um, well, fortunately, our, our politics are calm and will never rear their ugly head again. I think that's behind us now. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>